Oh, do you have any other questions? Uh, yes. Can you explain the theory for me, and I'll jump in when I have questions. Sure. Um, let me say first, though, that some of this theory in the early parts might seem a bit scientific, but understand it's all pretty simple stuff. All I did was solve for the unknown regarding universe design from a partially complete mosaic which many great scientists had contributed to. Uh, talk of science will lead to a parallel on theology with philosophy mixed in, so it covers a wide range of interesting ideas. Uh, the more you pay attention to and understand the science, the better you'll come to understand its parallel express, expressed in the realm of consciousness. Okay, enough disclaimers. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, let me draw something out here, because I want to show you something. Now, earlier I had said the hypothesis for the theory was that the universe is composed of equal amounts of mass and consciousness. And that's a very basic premise to this theory. And so that would mean that we have two substances in this universe. Okay? And um, the third dimension is composed of mass. And this fifth dimension here is composed of consciousness. I'll just put a C for consciousness. And this line down the middle here represents the fourth dimension, which is time. Okay, and just as mass is composed of atoms, uh, consciousness is composed of motives. Now, motives is a word I created to express that there's a uh, consciousness in its smallest form, comparable to atoms. Um, and that I needed a word for that because if you have equal amounts of mass and consciousness they have to perfectly overlap at the end of the big crunch. Now, um, And Lotus is backwards. From atoms, yeah, yes. Yeah. I took the word atom yeah. and made moda out of it. So consciousness is composed of motas just as mass is composed of atoms. And we'll see parallels throughout this theory. Um, energy is the force in the substance mass just as thoughts are the force in the substance consciousness. Just as mass is composed of atoms, uh, consciousness is composed of motives. Uh, uh, well, how can consciousness, uh, which is spirit, be considered a substance? That's a good question. Um, it is in the fifth dimension. That is to say, it's a substance relative to the fifth dimension. Um, I know that sounds like an odd idea, but since our senses are tuned to the third dimension, it has so far um, eluded scientific detection. However, there are experiments I've delineated that could potentially verify its existence, which we'll talk about later. Okay, go on. Um, Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared, explains the relationship between... Um, we have E equals mc squared. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. And what this does is it explains the relationship between the energy, the energy and mass by using the speed of light squared as a constant. So you take the mass, the total atoms in some substance like a spoon, say, and multiply by the speed of light squared, and that equals the energy. Um, and the parallel, um, well, so anyway, um, this was a huge idea at the time when Einstein came out with this in 1905. Mm -hmm. And it was this understanding that led to the idea that energy and mass could be released in atomic explosions. The how-to of accomplishing that task came later from other scientists. But the crux of it is this, that the energy and mass, say this spoon, mm -hmm. is at rest. Meaning it's, it's all caught up in here. If you were to release the energy in this spoon based on this equation, it would level, you know, several city blocks. So there's a tremendous amount of energy caught up in here. Uh, the, but the same idea over here is if we have an equation for consciousness, then we have thought equals consciousness times the speed of light squared. Now, I didn't write that very clearly, but... 
the that's I, the parallel equation that's, of consciousness. Yeah, that's the parallel equation. And uh, what it means is that each one of us has a bit of consciousness. Mm -hmm. That if you were to, able to figure out how much that is, and multiply by the speed of light squared, mm -hmm. it would equal a certain amount of thought threshold. Just as you could release energy from this spoon, mm -hmm. if you could release the energy from your consciousness, it would have a certain force. Um, uh, so, where are we headed with this, then? Um, the greater idea is this. If all the consciousness in the universe, which is theorized here to be equal in amount to all the mass, uh, contracts into one peak energy consciousness, overlapping all mass, which is compressed into one black hole, then all consciousness releases its thought at rest in the form of thermal energy into the mass, causing it to expand into a new universe, then we have a potentially viable explanation for what caused the Big Bang. Now that's in a, in a nutshell, and I realize that's a mouthful, but it'll become clearer as we move along. Very interesting, because this is a lot to consider. Yeah, but um, if you think in terms of a universe that somehow works, that somehow this big bang occurred, and you think in terms of this, of one half of the universe is consciousness, and that can hold, that form of substance in the fifth dimension can hold energy, just as mass can in the third dimension, then it creates a dynamic where it's very possible to have an oscillating universe, where you have this energy being transferred into mass to start the, a new universe, and then there's a set of forces that proceeds from there for the universe to move forward, and that's what we'll be talking about. So it's a, a theory of cycling forces?